Hey, all right. Howdy, folks. Uh, Brian Kostinich here, and I am CEO and co-founder of Wilderness Labs, and um, I'm ex super excited to be here. Thanks to Microsoft, and thanks for the intro. Uh, I trust everyone's having a blast at uh, .NET Conf and uh, excited about the awesome new stuff in .NET 8. Today, I am going to tell you about how to connect your IoT devices and get their sensor data into the cloud. And we're going to talk about kind of common or IoT orchestration patterns where, <clears throat> where uh, you're taking sensor data, you're putting it into like a digital twin, and then you're doing command and control and whatnot. So yeah, welcome to my talk of putting the I in IoT. Um, all right, all right. So if you are watching this, you probably already love .NET and know that it runs basically everywhere. Um, and what you may not know is that Meadow brings modern .NET to embedded devices. That's microcontrollers, um, Raspberry Pis, et cetera, and uh, enables you to use your existing .NET skills to build professional enterprise secure IoT. So we're gonna talk about exactly what that means. Um, and <clears throat> first I want to introduce you to Cultivar. Now Cultivar is a reference, an IoT reference application that we put together um, where I've automated my greenhouse and you can actually <clears throat> find the source code for all of this over in our GitHub. Um, repo under cultivar and let me play you a little video i recorded actually in my greenhouse to introduce you to it all right so in the greenhouse let's talk through the system here so we have uh, a watering a drip system uh, both up above below we've got these grow lights we've got a heater and the heater's job is really just to keep it above freezing. And then we also have a fan for ventilation on hot days, right? So we can do the full HVAC control system, make sure that the temperature is ideal for growing. And then of, all, of course, they have light and water, uh, both important ingredients for growing plants. And the way that this is set up is that the whole thing is run by a project lab board. And this is connected to a four port relay um, and that controls these outlets here. And we've got the light, water, fan, and heater. It also has a soil moisture sensor, an analog soil moisture sensor, which is down there. And you can see all of the live stats from the system displayed on it right now. And you can see that the light's on. Let me show you this in action. So what's brilliant about this is that over here, we have a re-terminal, which is made by Seed Studio, and we've got this Avalonia app, which is showing the live view of the, of the system, and we can actually control it from here. So if I turn on the ventilation, you see, there it is, it pops on, and then we heard the click of the relay, and now the fan's blowing. So we turn that off, and we can turn on the sprinklers. And so the valve pops over here, and water starts coming out of the drip system below. Hey, all right, uh, very cool. That's, uh, that's my greenhouse and that is cultivar. Now, what's happening here is a pretty common device orchestration pattern in that what you have is maybe many of the IoT devices out in the field and they're sending uh, data to uh, a de your device cloud and then your device cloud is responsible for what we call control plane stuff you know, or control plane data and control plane is things like uh, device metrics over the area over the air updates command and control basically anything that needs to happen to control those iot devices and any data associated with that <clears throat> and then what's happening is that we're actually pushing um data that those devices are picking up, maybe like atmospheric data, or in this case, you know, soil moisture, <clears throat> temperature, pressure um, in the greenhouse. And then we're forwarding those data streams on to additional enterprise backends, right? And that data is called data plane um, data or just the data plane. And, and so there's these two concepts of like, the, like I said, control plane, which is device, 
management and device data and then control and data plane, which is stuff that is actually more interesting outside of the devices, but what the devices are picking up. <clears throat> and then oftentimes you might have like an HMI or human machine interface uh, in which you can control things. Um, <clears throat> and maybe that connects up to a digital twin or whatever. And then you can do command and control back to uh, your devices. So we're gonna explore that in um, detail in <clears throat> The cultivar solution, we actually have five pieces to it. So the first is that we have our Meadow application, and this is just a .NET application that runs on the device, and that is control. <clears throat> That's responsible for reading sensors and doing the hardware control locally. Um, and then we have Meadow Cloud, and that is responsible for getting the data from the device and then streaming or forwarding those data streams onto additional um, enterprise backends. And then it also does the health metrics, it does over the air updates, um, and then the command and control, which we're actually gonna see an example of. And then um, we also have an Azure Event Hub integration, and that happens between Meadow Cloud and Azure. And what happens is that that's one of the, <clears throat> that's one of the subscribers to, the, to that data stream to the uh, data plane data stream for those devices. And then there's a, that actually forwards data onto a digital twin, which has instantaneous asset twin um, state. So that would show like the state of the greenhouse at any one point, and then you can query that. So so um, the Avalonia HMI, which, which is another piece of this solution, um, <clears throat> that runs on like Raspberry Pi in this case, it's, it's running on um, a, uh, Re terminal by Seed Studio, which is a Raspberry Pi with a, a uh, display attached to it. <clears throat> and that's listening to the state from the digital twin. And then it's actually sending command data into or commands to uh, Meadow Cloud, which then sends it to the devices. And <clears throat> if we look at our Meadow application, so, the, so that's the first piece of this. What we have is on our Meadow device. Um, <clears throat> so we've got a, a project lab here, um, and that is <clears throat> running Meadow OS. And Meadow OS uh, has a core 3.1, a .NET Core 3.1 runtime, which is a .NET standard 2.1 API surface compatible. And, and that is uh, running on a micro RTOS, which is a small real-time operating system. Um, we use the NutX kernel, and then we have um, all of the .NET stuff built on top of it. <clears throat> and then what we generally do is that when you're coding against this, you code to Meadow Foundation peripheral drivers. So if we were to, um, if we go to the developer portal, the Wilderness Labs developer portal here, you see that we have this massive, uh, really just enormous library of drivers, so peripheral drivers that, that we support. Um, near as we can tell, it's the largest peripheral driver, IoT peripheral driver uh, library on the planet. But allows us to talk to things like on board is a BME 688, which does temperature, pressure, and humidity um, uh, readings and whatnot. And then underlying that is the Meadow Core APIs, which are hardware um, APIs, which allow you to actually talk to the talk to talk to the hardware directly. And you can talk to those directly, but we try to make it plug and play and super easy so that you don't actually have to worry about that plumbing by building out those Meadow Foundation APIs. And then there's also a bunch of other stuff in there uh, in the operating system. The operating system while it's a micro RTOS, while it's, while it's really designed to run on very tiny um, embedded microcontroller processors. So like this here is about the size of my, my, my fingernail, right? That's an STM32F7, that's a microcontroller. Um, while it's meant to run on those, it actually will feel very, you'll feel as a .NET developer, you'll feel very at home with it if you're familiar with like uh, mobile development because it's got a lot of the same things. It's got SQLite built in, so you have a database to talk to and you can use SQLite.net. Um, it's got SSL and it's got hardware crypto, um, cryptographic algorithms. Um, you know, those are accelerated on the hardware device and you can call them and, you know, get true random number generation and stuff like that. It's got USB debugging, so you can open up Visual Studio and you can do step-by-step -step debugging. It's got um, just-in-time support. So while we're running .NET code, we're actually, that .NET code runs just as fast as if it were uh, written in C++. 
And then it's got um, a hardware watchdog. So if things go sideways in your app, if your you know, app will automatically restart and um, it's got sleep APIs, et cetera. And if we actually jump over into this code here, we'll see here's, so here's the cultivar solution. You got cultivar core, cultivar meadow app, um, a simulator, which we're not gonna cover today, but it's really awesome because you can just run all this stuff in the desktop and then super uh, fast and easy to do like graphics, uh, graphics, writing your HMI and, and graphics and things like that without having to take the time to just deploy to the device, much like an emulator in uh, mobile uh, would be. And then we've got a re-terminal app, which is our, which is our uh, HMI. Um, and if you look at the Meadow app, what's interesting about this is <clears throat> that it just, this is all just normal.net, right? So you've got Matt, you've got an app, you've got an initialize, which um, where you bring up your hardware and then a run, which actually starts the app going, right? And there's some other stuff in here. We're doing Wi-Fi management and whatnot um, because this is uh, an embedded device. You know, all of that stuff is handled on device, unlike uh, Raspberry Pi or a computer or something where you would set your Wi-Fi elsewhere. You actually um, set that stuff up on the microcontroller and it would uh, initialize and connect. And if we jump in here to um, uh, the greenhouse controller, which is used whether you're using the simulator or whether you're using um, the Meadow app, that's in this cultivar core library, which is shared by both of those. And the greenhouse controller is really, this is the root controller that is responsible for all of the application logic and, and running the actual greenhouse. And so one of the things that's interesting in here is the sub subscribe to commands class. And in here, we actually listening for commands to turn on the fan or the heater, et cetera. And then it's actually doing stuff in the hardware. So um, like if we turn on the heater, we set the display controller, which does all of our display rendering. Um, so down in here in this, uh, if I can find it, uh, this is scroll, scroll. So this is how we actually draw um, all the stuff on the display there. <clears throat> and then we actually, on the hardware, we just say, you know, hardware heater is on based on what, you know, set that to the value that gets gets passed in. Um, and as I said, all of this stuff, if you're a .NET developer, should look pretty familiar to you. And what's cool about all this is that you'll notice that we have generics, we have um, tasks, async, await, um, all of that stuff that you are used to as a .NET developer is all available here in uh, in this app. And you can see here, um, we're actually, we're reading, we're <clears throat> this one um, where we do a read, <clears throat> we actually read the temperature sensors, uh, they're, sorry, the, the atmospheric sensors. So we get temperature, humidity, and moisture. We read all of those, we wait when all of them have been read, and then we bundle those up into, um, into uh, our, our data, you know, our data model, and then we will actually send that on to the cloud as well. So we'll so we'll update the cloud. And so actually, if we go over to to the cloud, Meadow Cloud here, we can see um, if I look at this office and I look at that. So that's the device, um, and I go over to events, and this is cool. You actually see errors. So as your device throws errors, we can actually see them, and you can see you know what's going on with those devices and their device health in the field. But here we go, here's an atmospheric reading that come in, came in just a minute ago, and it actually gave us our temperature, pressure, and humidity, right? So super interesting. Um, so that is, that's kind of a, a real quick overview of the Meadow app. Again, this is in GitHub, so if you want to uh, dive in, you can actually go and, go and jump in there. Um, and then next up is the digital twin. So this is, really interesting because the digital twin actually tracks the state of the device. So if we go over to our digital twin, we actually see here's a device and um, we, you know, you run the query and it'll, it'll update here and you can see um, what's going on and uh, oh, what's going on in these various devices. Um, I'm not sure actually which one is which here. Probably should name these a little bit better. <laughs> but the, the, Digital Twin is all built into Azure and it's incredibly powerful, right? Azure Digital Twin actually supports a number of enterprise 
twinning scenarios that are not, they aren't really covered anywhere else. Um, so, you know, you've got different types of twins. You've got like a device twin, you've got, which would be um, a single device. You've got an asset twin, which would be like the greenhouse. And then you've got even larger twins um, that deal with like very large uh, infrastructure and all the data that, that happens across many installations. And that sort of thing is um, really only as near as I can tell is really only handled by um, the Azure Digital Twinning System, um, which is pretty cool. But the thing about this is that it's a little clunky to set up, um, you know, like some of the other Azure stuff. <laughs> if you've played with Azure, you know what I'm talking about here. Um, and we're actually, there's a, the Jorge did a great video on this, um, on, on how to set up um, an Azure digital twin with uh, Meadow. So there's a link in the deck uh, and we'll put it as a link in the, in the talk notes. So you can go find that and you can watch through um, actually getting that set up. And we're working on ways to simplify that. So because of the way that Azure handles devices and the connection and all that, it's, it's, it's not really like a one touch process, but we're going to make some things in Meadow Cloud where when you add a device to a digital twin, you basically click the button and we'll do all the configuration for you. Um, but what this does is this actually drives the uh, state on the HMI that we built with Avalonia, right? And if we jump over to that, um, the Avalonia app is, as I mentioned, um, running on Raspberry Pi or Terminal. And here you can see this is a, this is a shot from the greenhouse. Um, and this was displaying actually the, the state of the greenhouse at that particular moment. And what's cool about Ava Avalonia is that it actually provides a modern .NET UX framework for cross-platform um, UI. UI apps, right? So um, in this case, it's running on Linux. So it's running on a Raspberry Pi. Um, and that's very cool. So it, it's actually listening to the Azure Digital Twin and getting its information from that rather than like the Meadow Cloud app. So you could imagine if you've got thousands of devices out there and you're streaming all this data, Azure is a really good place um, to put and store all of that, all of that data. And that's where um, digital twins come in. And the, if we pop over to the code again, you'll see here down, down here, we have the cultivar re terminal application. And in here is the digital twin, twin client. And there's our, our secrets for all to see. It's all right. There's no use going to look at our greenhouse data. Um, and it's pretty easy. You know, you basically connect to your, your digital twin, and then you can get the values um, from that particular asset twin. And then, of course, in there is also a connection to the Meadow Cloud uh, so that you can do command and control. And this is super, super powerful. So let me actually, let's talk about that. And um, let me show you that in action. So what command and control does is, is it enables you to send commands out to these IoT devices. And so basically what happens is like you have an HMI, it calls an endpoint into um, Meadow Cloud. And you can also do this in the UI, which we'll see. And then it takes um, that that um, so that would be a, it creates a JSON package, uh, sticks it in an MQTT uh, message in our envelope, and actually encrypts that whole thing. So you so if you're bouncing between um, different MQTT hosts, you know there's it's not susceptible to man in the middle attacks. It can you know you make sure that like your data in there is secure and it's and it's signed, and so you know uh, it's not gonna. You're not going to get bad actors throwing in um, bad commands to, for example, maybe if you're doing, uh, you've got a wind turbine um, installation, you know, you're not going to have someone change the pitch on the blades too much in a windstorm and then that thing can self-destruct, right? So this is really built for enterprise IoT scenarios and, and critical infrastructure and whatnot. Um, and let me show you that in action. It's, it's pretty cool. So if we go back over to... Uh, Meadow Cloud here, and I go back to these devices, and you and I've got this. Um, I've got the cultivar office device here, and I can do send command, and I want to do fan, and let's say um, is on, and that's going to be true. Let's get rid of this other stuff, and we send this, 
and it sent and then immediately saw how fast that happened. Now, this is really interesting because what's happening here is that we're doing all of the, like I said, we do all, all the encryption of the stuff and then we send it over an MQTT um, message down to the device. The device uh, has an open socket to that, listens for it and then does that. And you saw that whole trip was basically instantaneous, right? So if we come in here and we can turn it off, face, false, send it and bam, off already, right? So that's all live and that's all, you know, like I said, all super fast. And you can do it either in the UI here or in this case, um, we're actually doing it from the HMI where we're creating an endpoint and we're sending it on to um, that API endpoint. We're sending that demand or the command to um, the web cloud API. Uh, so you can consume this in a number of different ways. <clears throat> so yeah, command and control is like super powerful and all part of that like orchestration, the whole picture, right? The ability to remotely manage IoT installations is super important. Um, and this is super important in, especially in critical infrastructure in which you might have a system that is, is interdependent with other systems going on. For example, you might know, you might be running um, a wastewater treatment plant, for instance, and this is a customer of ours that's actually doing this. And you might want to actually change things at the wastewater treatment plant, depending on like weather systems coming in. You might want to, you might want to um, empty a, a holding field, you know, a holding pond in, in uh, preparation for a massive storm that's going to actually drop a bunch of water and maybe overwhelm the system. Um, and so this is, you know, this sort of like scenario in IoT is super interesting and super important to critical infrastructure, making cities and in infrastructure more resilient and more adaptive and smarter in the overall context of, of things. So it's a very cool, it's, it's, I think this is a really neat feature of, of Meadow Cloud and it's so easy to use. Um, if we drop back over the code, the way that this works is we saw in, in the cloud that when I sent this, what this was was just a JSON, you know, a JSON package. And what we have is a this fan class, and this is iMeadow command. And basically what happens is that when that MQTT message comes in, we automatically deserialize it into this class. And then in the greenhouse controller, we subscribe to that fan class and then we did the appropriate processing from that. So that's, you know, that's a super powerful feature. Um, we talked about the app, the HMI app. And, and, and like I said, this is kind of like, if we go back to this overall orchestration pattern, you can see that this is a really common way to, um, to control and devices in the field to get the sensor data from those devices and to integrate that data into the back end. And what we've built here is that, um, there's sort of two pieces, right? There's there's Meadow OS, which en enables you to run your, to use your .NET skills to run applications, .NET application, um, .NET apps on hardware, use, use all of our lovely hardware APIs and the hardware drivers, et cetera. And then Meadow Cloud will enable you to manage those devices. It does all the control plane stuff and is really focused on the device management. So health metrics, over the air updates, command and control, et cetera. Um, and then it pushes that data, any data that you want, you can basically, through integrations, you can push those streams to other inter inter enterprise data integrations. And this is super important because you can imagine if you have hundreds of thousands of devices or millions of devices out there, you need a big back end to take all of that data and store it and do interesting things like, um, you know, look at visualizations in data cake or look for anomalies in, in a, you know, an anomaly detection from Azure. Uh, or like I said, do the digital twins and doing this across massive amounts of infrastructure. And that's, that's what Azure, that's what, you know, AWS, Google Cloud, et cetera, that's what they're really good at. Um, so this whole scenario together is like kind of the modern secure IoT, um, you know, orchestration pattern. So thanks for coming to the talk. Um, really appreciate it. You can um, 
find all of our all of the links to what I've talked about here and some other stuff in uh, in we'll post it with the talk. And I hope everyone enjoys uh, the rest of .NET conference. I'll be around to answer some questions if you have them. And otherwise, I will see you on the flip side. How's it going? <laughs> hey, it's it's fantastic. How are you doing, Javier? Well, good. My apologies. I was trying to hit. I was trying to bring you in and like too many things, and I don't have a mouse. <laughs> so <laughs> no mouse. Uh, my gosh, the uh, the the video. I mean, it's great. I love the the entire platform. is pretty awesome. Uh, I have. I, there's a question here that somebody posted and uh, that asks. Um, could it also be used with our D Arduino as well? So you have the you know the metal cloud. Is it just only for metal devices, or can I bring any other devices and and have that command control in the statistics? Yeah. So today it works with uh, metal OS devices, and that's okay. both our microcontroller F7 stuff, and then also Raspberry Pi. Um, so embedded Linux, and we are working on bringing the metal cloud client everywhere. Right. Awesome. So we'll bring it to whether you're doing um, wiring code in in Arduino or you're doing MicroPython right. or you're doing embedded C, the idea is that you'll be able to get all those, uh, you know, health metrics, automatic uh, right. logging, health metrics, metrics, crash reporting, and then OTA will get that anywhere, right? So it's not just for Meadow devices, that's just where it is today. But we do have um, a beta of the, the Linux support mm -hmm. um, and the rest is coming. So it's on the roadmap. That's pretty great. So like, in the in the application, you were showing how the the uh, Avalonia app and the HTMI HTMI device right was sending the commands. Is there some um, is once the command gets sent right? I'm I'm guessing there's a resiliency right that it's it needs to connect to the to the device right and try to send it. So because it's a two way communication, uh, how does that work behind the scenes? Yeah, hundred percent. So this was actually designed to run in what we call a disconnected, intermittent, low latency, or DIL constrained network. Okay. So the idea is that your devices may not be connected all the right. time, right? right? And so what happens is that the messages get into a queue. So uh, Hanselman likens this to an outbox. Um, mm -hmm. So they get into a queue in the um, cloud, and when those device when the device connects, it will pull all those those messages down. And the same thing with like logging and crash reporting and whatnot is that all that stuff is actually saved and cached locally first. Okay. And then as the device connects to the cloud, it'll send all of that stuff up. So you can work in an asynchronous offline offline way. Got it. Yeah. And obviously and it's all just magic, right? Yeah, was, for free. Yeah, exactly. Well, and the thing is, I would assume too that per device, you may want to be able to say, hey, disconnect, you know, for three or connect every X interval, right? Because of, you know, you want to be able to get that information, right? Yeah. And that's actually all um, configurable uh, outside of code as well. You can just, there's a config oh, file and you can say there's like, you know, interval min minutes for right. updates to the cloud. You set it to five or 10 right. or whatever. Yeah. So it's all just automatic and, yep. and free. And you can also, you know, because Meta OS, they're just .NET apps. You also mm -hmm. have a full stack for network requests. If you want to just call other clouds directly or right. other backend systems, you just open up an HTTP request or pull in your favorite, you know, RESTful library and just go for it, right? That's you know, awesome. so you're not you're also not like locked into this 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 thing that we do with MetaCloud. The thing with MetaCloud is that you basically get all of the local caching for free. Right. And then you save on bandwidth because you send it up one time and then you can stream that data to any number of endpoints from there, right? So you can send it to data cake, you can send it to event hub, and digital twin, you can send it to anomaly detection, et cetera. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, it, you do all the heavy lifting with the, uh, with Metal Cloud, which is great, right? So if, if because there are so many things that you have to worry about when you're deploying a uh, solution like that, especially that large mm -hmm. of a solution, that the more that the more the cloud does, the better, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's right. And and Jeffrey just asked, you know, what's like the state of the art in DevOps for this for deployments oh, and automated full system testing. And and the great thing about this is everything that's in Meadow Cloud is all exposed via an API service, oh, right? Awesome. So you can run this a full CI CD in GitHub um, through Actions or whatever, or, or Azure mm -hmm. DevOps or whatever your you know your favorite tooling is, and then you can push those packages to Meadow Cloud um, through the API. So it's like fully enterprise integrated, right? And that was like a big 
a requirement for us when we set out to build this is like, okay, well, our customers need a couple of things. One, they need security and that's to be table stakes. And I don't mean like, I don't mean like light security. I mean, security from the full stack, right? right? Messages have to be encrypted, you know, payloads encrypted, like everything's over SSL, which is honestly not a common thing in microcontroller embedded development, because a lot of these don't even have this, this space for SSL certificates, right? So we just made sure that one, security was table stakes. And number two, we're really uh, supporting enterprise workflows. And so like DevOps, you know, with all of your existing right. systems and whatnot, it all just plugs in. Excellent. Well, Brian, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, answer some questions. I was blown away. Great, great job with the MetaCloud too. <laughs> thanks, Javier. It was great to be on here and thanks for having us. And I yep. hope everyone has a blast at .NET.com. Awesome. Thank you so much.